Hey, welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines from our city, state and country, where we take a look at your comments, ideas and suggestions. And we combine all this knowledge to put it to good use as a community of English speaking locals. Today is Saturday, June 10, and it is a pleasure to get together with you today. It is going to be a fun broadcast i hope we are light on news but i had so many wonderful adventures yesterday in town that i want to tell you about ah it's great yesterday i got up close and personal with a new sculpture that jim demetro just unveiled on the malecon i went to see a show um at encanto and boy did it affect me in so many levels and then i discovered an amazing restaurant that features homemade pastas italian and argentinian style that you probably already know about but it is definitely news to me um but first welcome everybody to coffee and headlines particularly if you are new to the broadcast or to the live experience if that is the case feel free to write the word new in your comment and we'll be so very happy to give you a nice little welcome and as always, if there is something really important that you wish to share with everybody else, um, it helps a great deal if you ask for, if you add a capital letter Q at the beginning of the broadcast. Um, let's see what we have. Uh, let's start with our news. We do have a couple of items. The first one having to do with another another croc that was busted. This time it happened along Francisco Medina Asensio. This is near the Chevrolet dealer in um, Marina Vallarta. It is a young, previously um, untagged female specimen measuring 130 centimeters in length. She was at risk of being run over by passing vehicles, but fortunately, authorities were able to catch her and found her in good health. She was promptly tagged with number 987 and relocated to the Ameca River. Yay. Now, the other bit of news that I want to share with you, and in case you didn't know, Mexico has its own Academy Awards, but the coveted prize is not called Oscar. It is called Ariel or Ariel. I don't know how you would pronounce it. In English and Spanish, we call it the Ariel. And for the first time in its 65-year history, the annual award ceremony will not take place in Mexico City. It will take place in Guadalajara's beautiful Teatro de Goyado on, sent on September 9 of this year. How was this possible? Well, the state of Jalisco found a way to finance the ceremony, which, by the way, has made its members very, very happy as this allows for new and exciting encounters with filmmakers from different parts of the country and not just a Mexico City-centric experience. 
this year's nominees will be announced in 10 days from today. Um, again, this is Mexico's highest award for films and television, I believe television is included, that were filmed and produced here in Mexico. Now, let's take a quick look at the weather forecast just to see what is going on out there. And let me put it up on my screen so that I can see what we're talking about. It is sunny, but only cool kids are allowed outside when it's sunny, says snarky weatherman. Uh, it is 23 degrees, feels like 23. Humidity is at 62%. Our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 74. And our weather forecast for today says mostly clear skies in the morning with overcast skies in the afternoon, a high of 32 and a low of 23. Tomorrow we can expect a humid day with mostly clear skies throughout the day, a high of 31 and a low of 24. And then on Monday, a humid with most a humid day with mostly clear skies but a few clouds may be wandering around in the afternoon and a high of 31 and a low of 24. let me come back to my main screen and quit a couple of applications that i forgot to turn off before we started the broadcast just in case things get a little unruly now moving right along i want to start by telling you <laughs> You know, I love when you send me questions about this, that, and the other. And yesterday, I received a wonderful text message from our dear friend Gina from Whiskey Kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to put it up on the screen because she sends me this message and attaches to it a soundbite that went like this. ¿Qué es eso? No entiendo. ¿Qué es eso? No entiendo. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to that. And next time you guys write something that I don't understand, I'm simply going to go. ¿Qué es eso? No entiendo. <laughs> so what Gina sent me is a hashtag that reads Poca Madre. And Poca Madre, oh my goodness, it, it's, it's a curious expression that we use in Mexico that I would like to unpack right now, but not before reminding you of how unfortunate mothers are in Mexico when it comes to vernacular expressions, because there's all kinds of expressions in which mothers get involved um, that are just horrible, horrible insults in Mexico. Poca Madre is a fascinating one because it can be a really awesome thing or it can be a really horrible thing. Please let me explain. If you say, well, first of all, the expression literally means a little mother or your mother is small or you don't have enough of a mother, which is kind of bizarre. As an insult, it can be a general insult used to refer to an unpleasant situation. Actually, let me re let me rewind that. I'm going to use it first as an insult. If um, if somebody has done something horrible or abusive or nasty or unjust, you can just yell or say to that person, poca madre, just like that. That is not a nice thing to say. Um, if somebody is telling you about someone or some um, un unfortunate situation, and you say, que poca madre, that means you're acknowledging that it is a horrible thing. But then the fascinating thing about the expression itself is that if you substitute the word que with the word de, and you say, de poca madre, that can refer to any situation that was totally awesome. How was your vacation? De poca madre, which means you had a great vacation. Um, how was the food at the restaurant that you visited? De poca madre, which means that it was really, really awesome. So you can go from que poca madre, describing something that was horrible, to de poca madre, describing something that was wonderful. And that will hopefully clarify Gina's... ¿Qué es eso? No entiendo. 
Let me know, Gina, if you still have any questions. I also want to let you know that yesterday I found myself out and about through town. And one of the things I really wanted to do is get up close and personal with Jim Demetro's new margarita, margarita drinking uh, burro sculpture, which was uh, installed and inaugurated right around the corner from Lazaro Cárdenas Park. And here he is. He was difficult. I don't know if he's a he burro or a lady burro, but he was challenging to photograph because the sun was glaring all over the place. Here's a little bit more of a close up. And if you're wondering what's going on down here in the bottom half, well, you can barely see it because my my face is covering it. There's a little mouse. There's a tiny, itty-bitty little mouse located right at the bottom of, uh, of the, the backrest. I don't know why the mouse is there or what is the mouse's name, but we will check in, we'll check in with Jim Demetro next time I run into him to find out the significance of the tiny little mouse that is located there. And then, of course, I did actually sit down in front of the drinking horse. And this is the view you get when you're sitting down. I think it's a fun, a fun sculpture that Jim Demetro has once again donated to the city. We reported on this just the other day. And we, I forget how many sculptures he has donated, but this is definitely a whimsical and really fun one that you will <laughs> you will you will enjoy next time you walk in that neck of the woods from there i proceeded to go to uh encanto to listen to the first performance by jordan and dinesh these are two young musicians that have started to make noise uh, no pun intended, here in Puerto Vallarta. They had their first ever gig um, at Encanto, although they had participated in other events at the venue. And I was invited by my friend Paul, and I joined him. This was upstairs at the, at the bar at Encanto, and it was a really fun experience, and I'm going to tell you why. Um we are very prone to praising a lot of professional acts that come here to Puerto Vallarta or local acts that are really that really have their act together. But, you know, getting your act together as a live act does not happen automatically or overnight. You know, we need to get on stage a number of times. We need to conquer our fear and our nervousness. Sometimes it goes away. Sometimes it lingers for me. Uh, even after so many years of doing live uh, public speaking and being on stage, I still get very jittery and nervous. So it is a wonderful thing that there are venues in town that provide stepping stones for young artists to start developing their skills on stage. And last night was really fun. Uh, Jordan was very endearing. I had the opportunity to hear her live because she was one of the finalists in the latest edition of the So You Think You Can Rise uh, concert. And I foresee a very, very promising future for these two musicians. But I have something to say about the audience that was present yesterday. There were a lot of people. The place was very comfortable. It was air conditioning. It was air conditioned, so I can see why a lot of people would want to be there, not only to support them, but also to enjoy a little break from the, the humidity and the temperature outside. As I mentioned, there was no cover because they are not professional musicians. They are in the process of becoming professional musicians. So what happened yesterday? Well, I can tell you this. When I go to a restaurant that does not have a stage uh, and there is live music being performed, I immediately assume that the music is there for background purposes. And as such, I can proceed with my meal, uh, being respectful and acknowledging the musicians between songs with a little bit of clapping. But for all intents and purposes, I'm there to eat. 
I'm not there to listen to the music. I did not ask for the music. As such, my priority is to enjoy a nice meal, the conversation with my friends if they're if I'm accompanied, and then if there's music, it's a nice compliment. But it's a different thing when we find ourselves in a place where musicians are on a stage. I immediately assume that the musicians are on a stage because they are worthy of undivided attention. That's what the stage is for. So what happened yesterday and what happens frequently in Puerto Vallarta, unfortunately, is all the chatter that goes on among those present listening to music. And it's very, very distracting. Uh, for those of you that have been on stage before, or maybe you were in a performance when you were a kid in your school and you got all nervous, you know, it would be helpful if we remembered those feelings. Because when you have uh, young musicians like the ones that we were enjoying yesterday, you know, they are nervous to begin with. And, and, and there were some mistakes and some tuning problems, but that is perfectly understandable. That was the first time that they were on stage. But when we are talking while they're performing, we only make matters worse. You know, I mean, if you reach over to a friend and do the occasional whisper, just to say something brief, you know, that's okay. But when you're carrying on a conversation at even at a low volume, you know, it is very, very rude and disrespectful to the performers. And it is also very uncomfortable for the rest of us that are trying to focus at at our attention on the musicians. And you might be thinking, oh, well, but I'm sitting there and I'm just whispering to my friend. Well, bullshit. I call bullshit and I'm going to tell you why. Because musicians on stage can still see you and they see that you are not paying attention to them. Your attention is elsewhere. And that is very, very distracting. Don't do it. Now, how do we react on situations like that? Unfortunately, we also sometimes draw attention to ourselves by turning around and going Shh, or something like that. But when we do that, you know, we are just as guilty of drawing attention to ourselves as those people that are chatting. So I'm going to tell you what I do. And what I do is the following. When a venue truly respects the pleasure of undistracted listening, it is the venue's responsibility to call out people that are chatting during performances. So what I do is I find a waiter and I say to the waiter, you know, would you kindly go to those people, you know, sitting wherever they are and tell them to shut up? Why should we be the ones doing the unpleasant job that a venue should be doing? Now, if the venue respectfully appreciates performers, then it should be the venue's job to do that. If a venue does not find a way to cordially acknowledge these uncomfortable situations and does not do something about it, then it's probably a venue that does not respect performers of any kind altogether. So if you were there last night and you feel offended or ruffled by my comment, I don't care. All I care about here is that we become more respectful and more appreciative of those people that are trying to become professional musicians and are trying to make a better life for themselves through music. And now I step off my little stepping stone and I stop my rant and I end my evening with a wonderful experience that I had at this great little Italian Argentinian restaurant called El Bodegón de Pastas. It is located on Calle Libertad. You know, it is amazing how much Puerto Vallarta has grown because now we have all these little communities uh, or different neighborhoods and each neighborhood has its charm. And, um, and you know, I found this great restaurant. We, Paul and I had never been there before and it's called El Bodegón de las Pastas or El Bodegón de Pastas, it's owned by a gay couple. I don't know if they're actual gay partners, but they are partners in the business. They were so amazing to us. And it's a tiny, tiny little restaurant. I think it barely seats like um, 15 people or so. And again, they are located right on, uh, on Calle Libertad, 
as it turns around. Libertad is the extension of Insurgentes Street. You know, when the Insurgentes Street turns to the left, there they are, half a block on the left side. And we had the most amazing dinner there. It consisted, we shared a salad and then we each had an entree, but we could have easily shared their entree because uh, they were very, very generous portions. And the owners were amazing, and I strongly recommend this place. I asked them, how long have you been here? You guys are wonderful. And they said, we've been here for a year, so which goes to say that, you know, we get used to hanging out in our own neighborhoods. We get used to experiencing our own restaurants. But if you find yourselves in El Centro or near this place, I strongly, strongly recommend it. And um, what else do we have? Of course, today is Saturday, so we have our new Thank You Saturday feature. And I want to acknowledge, as we did last week, the new friends that have joined us as members here at Coffee and Headlines. And for the first time, I will mention our community partners. Thank you very much, Jim and Mark, for becoming Clusterites this week. We very much appreciate your support. I also want to thank uh, cluster members, cluster angels, Mark, Luisa, David, and Scott, and Bill, who either went ahead and pursued a new cluster angel membership to Coffee and Headlines, or they upgraded. And then before I announce our brand new community partners, I want to tell you that it took me longer to write the the proposal letter that it took for these wonderful friends and local business owners to reach out to me and tell me we are interested. So I am happy to announce that the community partners for Coffee and Headlines for this year are Apache's Martini Bar, a fun alfresco bar perfectly uh, located in uh, the heart of Zona Romantica, perfect for people watching and for meeting people. They feature a daily happy hour from four to seven. Best Court Cutting TV, a locally based television service provider offering you hundreds of international channels for your viewing pleasure, now offering also 126 channels from Mexico. Hotel Mercurio, which we know and love, Puerto Vallarta's favorite hotel for the LGBT plus community, featuring their legendary beers, boys and burgers party every Sunday. Bistro Mercurio, which is Hotel Mercurio's own independently branded poolside restaurant that offers thoughtful versions of American and Mexican favorites. And last but not least, Joint Coworking Hotel, a beautifully appointed hotel located next to the Rio Cuale that also offers a state-of-the-art co-working space in a variety of ongoing courses, classes, and workshops, including my own music appreciation presentations. I'm very grateful for the trust that these friends and companies, local businesses, have placed on me and on Coffee and Headlines. So I encourage you to get to know these businesses uh, better as they are an integral part of our being able to come to you on a daily basis to bring you all the content that we produce. Thank you very much. And of course, now I'm eager to read your comments and questions and cues as usual. Thank you very much for your good mornings as always. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Many, many, many good mornings, which are very much appreciated. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. No. Oh, my God. You guys got snarky. <laughs> I love it. I'm not going to say anything. I love it. Uh, let's see. Dan, I re Dan is reporting that Kathy made cinnamon rolls this morning and it's making caramel corn as she listens to Coffee and Headlines. The best caramel corn that can be enjoyed in Puerto Vallarta is made by Kathy. Thank you so much for that, that mm, memory. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, Karen says Jim's new sculpture is adorable. I love it. I was, I loved it. I loved it. I really did. I loved sitting on it. My butt didn't get too warm and it was really, really sunny yesterday. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Gina is in the house. Gina, I hope you found uh, my explanation helpful. Uh, after you said, ¿Qué es eso? No entiendo. <laughs> I'm going to wear that out. I definitely am. Uh, let's see. Ooh. True, Paco, too much shushing is also distracting and glares don't usually cut it. Well, yeah. I mean, why should I or anyone be the bad guy in that situation? You know? It should be the venue's responsibility to do something about it. All one should have to do is to quietly mention it to a waiter and have the waiter do the dirty work. That's what the venue is there for. If if the venue cares for quality listening experiences, if the venue chooses not to do anything about it, then I wonder if the venue is really that invested in good live listening experiences. And I'm not saying that Encanto is, and I'm not saying that Encanto isn't. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see. Oh, wonderful. El Bodegón is amazing. We were introduced to this place in January. A hidden jewel. I could not agree with you more, Ricky. I. It was such a wonderful place. I wish I had had room for dessert, and I'm definitely going back for it. Um... People also sometimes neglect to clap because they are so lost in themselves. You know, at a restaurant, I always make it a point to clap, even if I'm in the middle of a conversation, just because, you know, even when you're hired to be background music, we all need some encouragement. We all need some acknowledgement. Uh, let's see. It's continu uh, Thank you for that, Nicole. It's continually amazing to me how these little restaurants have such great chefs. I feel so lucky to live here. Let me add to that, Nicole, and let me tell you, and this will explain in case it's necessary, why I have such a big heart for small business, uh, businesses in general and small restaurants in particular. You know, when you're starting you don't have the budget to advertise. And advertising in this city is so darn expensive if you try to do it the traditional way through magazines and publications and this, that, and the other, which is why we're always here at Coffee and, Get and Headlines. We're always gonna have a soft spot for small venture, and we're always going to praise them as much as possible. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, let's see. Oh, Jill adds to that, our go-to place in our hood. We were one of their first customers at El Bodegón de Pastas. Thank you for that. Ryan has been there. Ryan, how are you doing? Have been to El Bodegón de Pastas four times and have enjoyed my meal each and every time. The empanadas are also a great takeout meal. I tried their empanada and it was just absolutely in hindsight. For dinner, I should have had just like a little something and I would have taken my pasta to go. Oh, and another thing to mention about the place, you can bring your own wine. And they they didn't mention any kind of corking fee. I saw other people bringing their own bottle of wine, so I'm definitely going to do that next time I go. Um, Sherry adds a comment about uh, Bistro Mercurio. If you're lucky, you will see the cookie lady pass through so you could buy her wonderful treats. That is also true and a wonderful place. Um, recently referred a friend to stay at Mercurio. He will be there soon. That's wonderful, Pat. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think we are... We are done with the comments, which means it's time to put this up. As always, thank you for being part of this wonderful broadcast. Um, or thank you for making this wonderful broadcast wonderful, I mean to say. I will see you again on Monday morning with more good news. I have new dates for music appreciation presentations and new topics to announce. So I'm excited about that. But for now, I'm off to enjoy a wonderful weekend and hope that you will enjoy one as well. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.